This is the oldest 3D game ever. It's called Maze War. It was made 50 years ago all the way back in 1973 for the Imlock PDS-1 mainframe. It was an online multiplayer first person shooter like Call of Duty, but the players fought inside of a maze. This game also happens to be the oldest first person shooter and one of the oldest online multiplayer games ever. Now if I'm being completely and utterly honest, this game is absolutely terrible. I'm just kidding. But we can all agree that this game needs a bit of a modern upgrade by a very skilled developer like me. I am embarrassed to say that this simple game was not easy to recreate at all, but it turned out to be the best game that I have ever made. Before I even started working on the game, I realized that I was in a very terrifying situation. If I didn't change the name of the original game, then I could end up getting sued for millions and millions of dollars and have all of my wives taken away. The original game was called Maze War, so I used my big huge genius to come up with a new name. Phew, now I'm safe from any lawsuits. For a game all about mazes and battles, I decided to start working on the battles first. And for battles, there needs to be a player model. After a quick Google query, it turns out that the original game back in 1973 had the weirdest player model that I've ever seen. What? What the? What the fuck? So, instead of this huge demonic creepy eyeball thing as the player model, I added... Can you guess? I added a bean with sunglasses. Remember, this is a remake, not a remaster, so I'm gonna change a couple things. And just wait, because I'll be making the coolest player model that I've ever made later in this video. After threatening my keyboard if it doesn't write good code, I made this simple system for player movement that basically allows your player to movement. I also made the player able to sprint by holding down shift, and after adding the jumping, the basic movement is done. Well, not yet. Since this game is going to have online multiplayer, even something as seemingly simple as player movement can be difficult to make. You have to make sure that only you control your player and that all positions and rotations are synchronized across players. But this time, I didn't struggle at all because I have made a multiplayer game before and I am just too good at game development. <laughs> awesome! Now I can play this game with my friends. Let's see what they think. Wow, this game is really fun, Sizak. Can I leave now? Okay, well it seems like the game is pretty boring right now, so I figured out that the reason was obviously because of the very boring player model. Don't get me wrong, the bean with sunglasses is pretty cool, but I can make a much better player model. After making the model in Blender, here, I introduce to you, uh, Greg. Yes, meet Greg. You might ask, why does Greg have sunglasses? Well, that's because, uh... Uh, he's cool. What do you mean, why does he have sunglasses? The real question is, how does he have sunglasses? Bro doesn't even have any ears to hold them up. Don't make fun of him, though. He's very insecure about it. Anyways, as you can tell, Greg is awesome. But you'll be able to make him look even awesomer later on. Just wait. Okay, so after making the new player model, I quickly animated him and dropped him into my, um, maze game. Don't worry, I'll add the maze later. But for now, I realized that it was time to face my fears. I was about to add something into my game that I have never added into any of my games before. And that thing is called arms. If you take a look at my old games, you'll notice that none of them have arms. This is because it is hard to add arms, especially for online multiplayer games. And I don't like things when they're hard. Please don't take that out of context. The first step to add arms into my game was to cut Greg's body into a million pieces and brutally rip his arms off. I am so sorry, Greg, but this has to be done. But now we have a separate arm mesh. This game is going to have an arm mesh all by itself with no body and then a full body mesh with arms. Basically, I need to have a separate arm mesh because when you're playing the game, you should only see your arms, but you should see the full body of every other player. This is just another thing that makes multiplayer games such a pain in my right test. With the arms finished, I needed to add a gun into the game so that the arms can actually hold something and so that the players can battle in maze battle. I tried to figure out what gun the original game in 1973 had, but I struggled to find any information about it. The 1973 game Maze War for the Imlock PDS-1 doesn't have any guns. What the fuck? But then I asked ChatGPT, and this is what it said. In the original version of Maze War, the game primarily featured a single type of weapon. The gun. Wow, okay. The original game featured the gun, huh? That didn't help me at all. I'm assuming the gun is a pistol. So I stole an old pistol model from a game that I made a long time ago, and I brought it into the game. I then animated the arms with the gun, and wow, it looks great. Right now, there is only a pistol in the game, but there will be six guns in total. The pistol, SMG, AR, shotgun, burst AR, and desert eagle. All players will start with the pistol, but after every kill, they will get a random gun. It's kind of like gun game, except 
except there is no order in which you get the guns after each kill. It's completely random. I then tested the new awesome game out with another player. And when I say another player, I mean myself, because no one wants to play my boring game anymore after they tried it earlier. But anyways, as you can see, I can only see the player's arms mesh on my screen, but for every other player, I see their full body. And this is what the player model looks like behind the scenes. It is absolutely cursed to look at. Greg, what happened to you? Are you okay? After that, I made the pistol actually shoot and added a health system with a health bar so that the players can brutally murder each other. That made it sound so much more harsh than it actually is. I also added a little death screen where your camera looks at the evil Greg who killed you so you can stare at your killer's eyes in your final moments. I also added name tags above the player's heads so you could see the player's name above their head on the name- you get the point, right? And then I added a ragdoll for when the player dies. Uh, never mind. I'll get back to that later. Great, now there's an actual game to play. I can't wait to show this to my friends. They're gonna love it. It's a pretty cool game, but it's called Maze Battle, and there's not really, like, a fucking maze in the game. But, you know, other than that, it's a pretty cool game. We're not even playing Maze Battle, we're playing Battle. Okay, okay, I get it. It's time to make the maze for Maze Battle. So I found an image online of the exact maze that was in the original game, and I imported the image into my game to try to get the correct sizing of the walls. I then made the actual walls using Pro Builder, and then I ran into a bit of a problem. The original game had a cool outline around all of the walls, but I tried for hours to get the outline to look like it does in the original game, but the problem was that the outline I was using didn't outline all of the edges of the wall, it only outlined the edges that go around the object relative to your view. If you know how to make a full outline around all edges, let me know in the comments. I replied to every comment, but for now, I just added a bunch of lights around the maze and I think it looks fine. The next problem was trying to figure out if the walls of the maze should be wide or narrow. I couldn't make up my mind, so I asked my Patreon supporters and they all voted for the same thing. Narrow gang. Narrow or bust. I'll go with narrow. Okay, so with the narrow walls all nice and narrow, I began to make the next gun in the game. I decided to make the SMG next. I modeled an SMG in Blender, and I'm curious, do you know what this SMG is called? It's called an Uzi. I'm American, okay? I happen to know every single gun in the world. I then brought the Uzi into the game. Yep, that seems about right. After fixing that, the game now has the SMG. But the game still only has two guns, and obviously that is not enough for an American like me, so I went back to make the rest of the guns. The AR and the shotgun are models that I, again, stole from an old game of mine, but the Deagle and the Burst AR are new models that I just made in Blender. And I'm not gonna lie, the Burst AR model might just be the best gun model that I have ever made. If you want me to make you any 3D models, check the link in the description and I can make you some. So right now, the game only has a primary weapon which is your gun, but I want there to be a secondary weapon like a knife, so the game turns into a London simulator when a player's health gets low and you just want to finish them off. So I modeled the knife in Blender and brought it into the game. This knife isn't just an ordinary knife though, this knife shoots bullets. No, I'm just kidding, but yeah, now there's a knife in the game which is your secondary weapon. You can switch between your gun and your knife by either pressing the numbers at the top of your keyboard, scrolling your mouse wheel, or clicking your mouse wheel. Great, now let's see what my friends think of the knife. I'm gonna be honest with you, uh, it looks like your character is dropping off. What? Um, anyways, next I wanted to add a kill streak into the game to reward the tryhards and make my game really unbalanced. But the problem was, I didn't know what kind of killstreaks I wanted to add, so I had to ask one of my good friends, Gilbert, to see if he had any good killstreak ideas for my game. He sent me a Google Doc with some ideas. Let's check them out. Hee <laughs> hee, thanks for letting me make killstreaks. Cannot wait to see these in the game XOX- oh geez. P.S. Please take a shower, you have been working on that video for like 10 days straight. Alright man, you did not have to call me out like that. Anyways. Let's see what kind of killstreaks he came up with. Spanker? 89 damage? Spank your opponent with a belt? Ha 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 ha. Gilbert, you gotta be kidding me. Let it rip? 450 damage? Fart really really loud make it a deadly gas chamber in a maze? LOL out loud. Gilbert, I knew I should have never asked you for help. Alright, so obviously Gilbert is being stupid, so I came up with the idea that the killstreak should just be a simple hand grenade. I want the players to get a grenade for every 5 kills that they get, so it's not really a killstreak, since you don't have to get all the kills in a row, but I think it might be better that way. Let me know what you think. But yeah, now you can give your opponent some blow. You should add sound effects. Yep, it's time to add sounds. Sound effects are very, very important so that the players can get fully immersed in the gameplay. And that's why I decided to make some of the sound effects myself. Since, you know, I'm definitely qualified for this task. First, I added a jump sound effect, so now when you jump, you can hear Greg make a stupid noise.
Next, after I successfully made the ragdoll for when the player dies, I made my favorite sound effect of all time, the death sound effect. This sound will play on your ragdoll when you die in the game. I'm not going to say anything else, but just listen knowing that this sound effect took about 20 tries to get right because I could not take this seriously. Uh... By the way, I added an option in the settings to turn this sound off in case it gets annoying, which it totally won't. I don't know what you're talking about. I then added all the other sounds in the game like the run cycle and gunshots. And I made them all 3D so you can hear the other players in a maze, that way it is easier to find them. After that, I then added the menu of main. And as you can see, one of the options is customization. This will be a big part of the game since players will be able to customize Greg to change his shirt color and pants color. There is also a third tab called special items and in there you can get access to a bunch of cosmetics by redeeming codes. One code is for my Patreon supporters and they get a top hat, baseball hat, Greg glasses, golden clothes, a golden gun skin, and a diamond gun skin. You can get another code by joining my discord server and it's completely free. If you join, you will get the code to unlock the googly glasses and the crystal gun skin. And I will also play a bunch of games and maze battle with all of you guys. I didn't want to be like EA locking everything behind a wall, so I added a gun skin that you can unlock for winning a game and it's really cool looking. If you want to get access to the Patreon code, then you can get it by joining the lowest tier on Patreon, and not to mention you also get a ton of other benefits like becoming a playtester and ending up in a video with your voiceover like people did in this video. I appreciate all of you guys. Link is in the description. As I was sitting there minding my own business, out of literal nowhere, the main menu camera deleted itself and all of the UI was gone. I I thought that was weird and that I could undo whatever just happened, but when I tried to get the camera back, it permanently disappeared. I lost all of the UI and I still have no idea how it happened. That meant that I had to remake all of the UI in the entire main menu. It doesn't sound too bad, but trust me, all of these little buttons in the customization menu were such a hassle to remake. It took about an hour and a half to remake everything. Yeah, I lost all of the UI because the main menu camera deleted itself. I still have no idea how that happened. Uh, did you have a backup? Yeah, I had one from yesterday, but I made a lot of progress since then, so I didn't want to go back, you know? Then why didn't you copy and paste the camera from the backup and put it into the new version? It turns out that I could have just copy and pasted the camera from a backup that I made, but of course, I didn't think of that because I lack common sense. But at the end of the day, it's night. Anyways, next I added a couple of special easter eggs into the game. First, I added a dagger hidden in a maze. This is the dagger of the assassin in my medieval Call of Duty game. I then added some small text hidden in a maze that says to subscribe to one of my patrons. You can get your own easter egg into my games like this guy did if you join that tier on Patreon. After playtesting the game in school, please don't tell my teacher, the game is now finished. It's free. Top link in the description. Have you ever wondered what Call of Duty would look like if it was medieval? Click the video on screen right now to find out. Trust me, it's awesome.